Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Q and A, the show where I take your questions from YouTube and Twitter and answer them here in video format. A lot to get into. A lot of questions about the Browns at this point. As you know, it's kind of fair. There are a lot of questions about the Cleveland Browns. Uh, but the first question is going to come from Nolan, who says, "Should we all realize the DPJ hype during training camp was silly?" He's maybe our sixth or seventh option right now on the team. I think he can be good, but people made it seem like he was an all-pro type player. Now, I think that's a little hyperbole on what people were saying on Donovan Peoples-Jones early in training camp and throughout it. Um, and I do think that the positive praise that Donovan Peoples-Jones got during training camp was earned he was playing well in training camp he was playing well against good defenses in training camp and he was doing that to a level where he thought he could be ready for a starting role sooner than later turns out sooner than later wasn't week one or week two of the nfl season i don't think anybody anticipated that i mean we were talking about donovan people's jones having a great camp and being a great piece for the Cleveland Browns as a third option because we assumed that Odell and Jarvis at that time would be available at this point in the season. That's just not the case. So, no, I don't think the Donovan Peoples-Jones hype was silly. I think some people heard the positive praise and prematurely started jumping to, oh, yeah, Donovan Peoples-Jones, he could start over Odell or we can get rid of Odell or get rid of Jarvis Landry. And I have never been a proponent of that. I've always thought that Donovan Peoples-Jones this year would be a third string guy. But next year, then he might be ready for a bigger role and to be honest with you his lack of production so far isn't really due to him not being able to separate he's gotten separation in Kansas City last week as well it's just he's not getting the ball um, so there is that disconnect going on with him too look Donovan Peoples-Jones is going to be a good player and the praise that he got during the training camp period was good now if other people took that praise and ran with it then that's on them but you know I think the praise has always been in the context that hey you know maybe not right now he's going to be the greatest player in the world but I think probably by the start of next season he's going to start to be a starting level wide receiver and somebody who can make an impact on the game on a regular basis uh, but that's kind of what I felt like the hype was always on Donovan Peoples-Jones I don't know if it was ever anything more the next question comes from Pee Wee, who says do you think or why do you think Miles and Clowney haven't been getting to the quarterback consistently I understand why people think this because they're not getting sacks but they've been getting to the quarterback consistently. I have to tell you this. Jadavion Clowney has been getting to the quarterback consistently, and Miles Garrett has most definitely been getting to the quarterback consistently. That ain't the issue. Look, we could talk about all the issues with the Joe Woods defense. Miles and Jadavion's ability to get there in three or four seconds, not an issue. They have been able to do that consistently. The bigger issue is with everything else going on with the defense it doesn't matter if Miles can get there in three seconds because the quarterbacks they're playing against can get the ball off in like two. That's the biggest problem with the defense. Why does that happen? I think there's a question in here that's going to make me elaborate more on that. Um, and I think uh, if you watch yesterday's video, Jake Burns and I had a great conversation about that. But yeah, I don't think it's Miles and Jadavion. And I, I know for a fact it's not them not being able to get to the quarterback. They've been getting to the quarterback consistently. You know, there's a couple of plays. There was one against Houston where Jadavion was literally arm on the shoulder of Tyrod Taylor, like within a half second of that ball getting snapped. And Tyrod was able to get the ball off to a wide open slant, and it ended up being like a 30, 40 yard play when it should have been a sack because there's no way that ball should have been able to come out that quick because nobody should have been open that easily. But that's what happens when you have certain issues going on with the defense. The next question comes from Preston, who says, what solutions do you think the Browns would look into as into how they're going to contain quarterbacks? It seems like we're getting great initial pressure and are either missing sacks or getting too far upfield. So the QB steps up. Personally, I would like to see a spy or less emphasis on ch charging upfield. Um, well, with Miles and Jadavion, 
they're going to charge upfield. Like, that's just what they're going to do. They're, they're elite pass rushers. Well, at least Miles is an elite pass rusher. Jadavion is somebody who's used to being an elite pass rusher. And they're always going to go at the pass rush with the assumption that they can get to the quarterback, which is going to cause them to go upfield more. Um, and you'll take that, right, because you'll get more pressures that way. But the issue is, as you stated, that quarterbacks can step up out that pressure um, and, and kind of sneak out. Now, what's the solution for that? A spy would be a good solution. Um, maybe some more aggressive and less cushiony zones could help out with that. Because if you have somebody who has a responsibility, like in a cover six, to have that that curl flat. Well, not the curl flat, but the flat responsibility. They can also kind of de facto act as the spy. If the quarterback breaks the pocket, they can leave their zone a little bit to follow the quarterback. So that doesn't happen. Um, so there, there are... Those kind of solutions, look, the spy is something that for certain quarterbacks in certain situations, it can be helpful. Um, you know, especially when you're playing against somebody who's not as dangerous as Patrick Mahomes. So if you go up against like Justin Fields, when you're going up against Kyler Murray, those kind of guys and those kind of offenses that are good, but not anything that should like expend all of your resources like the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, yeah, you might want to run a spy out there. That might be the simplest solution. But again, when you're going against somebody like Lamar, I don't think the spy is the best solution um, just because I don't know if you could put anybody in the spy that's going to be able to tackle him at the end of the day. And if that guy, if the spy can't tackle the quarterback, then what's the point of even having him spy? Um, because then you're just kind of wasting a player that's not going to be out there in coverage. So there's a lot of ways to think about it, but it is an interesting question. And it's something you need to think about. Next question comes from Stefanik, who says, do you think that the lack of defensive success has been attributed to the league figuring out how to contain players like Miles or Clowney, or does it fall on Joe Woods' schemes not fully utilizing the potential of his players? Okay. Yeah, they have not figured out Jadavion Clowney and Miles Garrett because they're getting pressures, they're getting to the quarterback. The biggest problem right now with the defense is, quite frankly, they are predictable. They are running a lot of base, a lot of just vanilla defense. And the issue with that is, quite frankly, when the offense knows exactly what the defense is doing and where the defense is going to be, it's real easy to scheme up completions for the offense, right? That is the biggest problem. The Browns are not creative on defense right now. They're not versatile on defense for whatever reason. And they're not they're not doing anything to make that math harder on the quarterbacks that they're playing, right? The reason Tyrod's able to get the ball out in two seconds, because one, Tyrod's a veteran quarterback. And Tyrod looks there and sees what is a pretty base cover three out there. Then he's just going to throw it to where he knows that the holes are in the cover three. Also, another thing with Tyrod Taylor that we have not talked about for quite a while, just because Tyrod hasn't been on our team, Tyrod Taylor, for a long time, been excellent against zone. That's Tyrod's calling card. Against zone, he's a really good quarterback. Against man, there's bigger problems there with Tyrod. So why the game plan wasn't a little bit more man and a little bit less zone against a quarterback who favors zone heavily, especially when you're going to be running base vanilla packages that are very predictable, I don't know. That is very concerning when it comes to Joe Woods. I'm not even going to lie to you that that – game plan didn't change knowing the personnel that he was playing at the quarterback position so that is a concern um, but that's the Browns biggest problem is that when they line up there defensively they're not confusing a single soul and when you don't confuse the soul when everybody knows where you're going to be in the NFL it does not matter who you have out there defensively you can have four Miles Garrett's on the defensive line and a bunch of all-stars or, or all pro players in that secondary. But if they know exactly where you're going to be on your defensive coverages, it's not, you're not going to stop them, right? That's why it didn't matter who Peyton Manning went against. It doesn't matter who Tom Brady goes against because Tom Brady and Peyton Manning are such good quarterbacks that they can decipher a defense, know where everybody's going to be and know where the ball should be immediately the Browns are making everybody look like that right now because the defense just isn't that hard to decipher so when Tyrod Taylor gets in there okay I know what this is ball right here ball right here 
ball right there. You're not fooling anybody, so the ball can get out in like two seconds, which negates any pressure that Miles or Clowney are getting, and that's the biggest, biggest, biggest problem with the defense. It's not busted coverages. It's not execution. It's to a point, it's tackling, but it's not really tackling. It's not all of these extra things. It's the fact that the offense knows exactly where everybody's going to be on every single play for the defense, and that's not good. And when this defense has so many versatile players, so many two-way players, well, not two-way, but you know what I mean, players who can play multiple positions on the defensive line, it makes no sense that we're this predictable right now. So maybe it's because they didn't play enough snaps together in the preseason, and that caused them to have this kind of disconnect that they're having right now when it comes to the versatility and disguising. But Something's got to change, and it has to change soon, because if you play Pittsburgh, who already knows your personnel well, and then you go in there with some base vanilla defense, they're going to tear you up. Baltimore is going to tear you up, and Cincinnati will tear you up if you're going to go out there and base set. So before you start these division games, you need to get this thing locked down and fixed um, so it's not as predictable as it is right now. I'm really disappointed that it's been so predictable and that the issue is really that simple on third down first down second down and fourth down you know that there, there's teams just know where to go with the football because the browns aren't making it difficult that's really the biggest issue this defense has and yes that partly is a joe woods thing but i'm willing to give it time because maybe they're just not comfortable doing it but at some point whether you think they're ready or not, you got to just say, you know, screw it and pull the trigger and go for it. Because what they're doing right now, easing into it, is not going to win games against Chicago. It's not going to win a game versus Arizona. You might not even beat the uh, Minnesota Vikings like this because, you know, everybody has their jokes about Kirk Cousins. But if you tell if you let Kirk Cousins know where the defense is going to be, he's going to light you up with Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook. So it's not working. I understand why they have been trying to ease into some of this stuff real slow, but this ain't the preseason no more. You got to get into it now. You got to you gotta live with some busted coverages if that's what's going to be to make this defense less predictable. It just has to be at that point because this predictability that they have here is not winning football. The next question comes from Brian Straw who says, I see what you're saying about critiquing Stefanski for being too concerned about completion percentage, which isn't allowing Baker to really gunsling the way he wants to. Um, but do you think that may be something that has to do with Odell being out, getting newer, younger receivers acclimated in the offense, or is it just being this early in the season? I think it's more early in the season because Odell was out all last year when Baker was slinging it. Um, so I don't think that's the issue, right? I mean, Baker led the league last year and completed air yards. So it tells you that he was taking deep shots consistently and he took deep shots consistently against the Kansas City Chiefs I just wish he had threw more during that game and they had leaned on him more than 28 times um, and similarly this week right where they just didn't go downfield at all and I think the game plan was to go screen heavy I hate screen heavy game plans um, I don't know I'm at the point now to what I see with Baker Mayfield on film and what I see him do that I think he's being bottlenecked almost a little bit just because they're not letting him do the things that we know Baker Mayfield's really good at. Right now they're using him like Case Keenum's in there, and that doesn't make a ton of sense to me. So, yeah, I would wish they would go and attack downfield more, um, and I hope they do with Odell being in there. Um, but, you know, it really shouldn't matter if Odell's in there or not because he hasn't been in there uh, for a long time and they were doing it last year. The next question comes from Michael, who says, with the addition of Felton, will his versatility and ability to create mismatches become a big factor throughout the rest of the season as long as he continues on that route that he's going? Yeah, man, Felton had one of them Nick Chubb. Remember when Nick Chubb's first game, he had like three carries? And he had like 50 yards per carry because he had like 150 yards and three carries or something like that in the touchdown. Demetri Felton did something similar where he had like three touches, but... 
he had like a 98 pro football focus grade, which is insane. Um, yeah, Demetri Felton needs to get the ball more. And yeah, I think he's going to get some of those plays that you see Jarvis Landry get, right? When Jarvis Landry does the little end around, I think that's going to go to Demetri Felton now. I think you're going to see him get some of those screens that Jarvis Landry normally gets. He's going to take care of those things. Maybe, hey, look, let's see if he can run some shallow slants in the middle of the field um, and be real tough in that way. Because if he can catch like that um, and run like that, he, he can take over some of those things while Jarvis Landry is out. And he's a spectacular athlete. He's not like fast, long speed, but he's quick. He's football quick. Um, kind of like Duke Johnson. But, you know, I think Jake Burns made a great comp when he said he's a lot similar to Duke Johnson. I think that is the case. And I think he's a better receiver than Duke Johnson was. I don't know if he's the same runner that Duke Johnson was, but I think he's a better receiver. The next question comes from Corey Clayton, who says, what is going on with the dif difference in play style um, with OBJ on the field versus if he wasn't? I think OBJ's presence doesn't really change the play style as much as it changes how defenses have to cover you, right? Because if OBJ is not out there, teams are going to put more people in the box and you're going to see the Browns have more struggles running the ball like they did in the first half versus the Texans. Now, I think whether OBJ is out there or not, that the Browns should be throwing enough to where they don't teams don't feel comfortable um, stacking a box like that. But that's just a disagreement right now I have with the team. Um, but, yeah, I think that's going to be the biggest change is his presence and how that's going to free up a lot of people. So that's it for this week's Q&A. Again, guys, thank you for asking these questions. Again, guys, have a great day and have a good night.